So, what is gender? Gender is a term that has increasingly become a part of the wider social conversation. Maybe you've had those conversations already with friends, family or teachers. I believe we are currently experiencing a revolution in how we understand gender. In terms of opening up a conversation and thinking critically about gender, we are living in really exciting times. As we shall see, the term gender involves a range of definitions that are continuously in flux, by which I mean that how we understand gender is changing. So, here we have a Victorian fashion plate from 1874, where fashion was crucial in creating gender boundaries. And this image shows women exquisitely packaged, ribboned, fur trimmed and edged in lace. Their role seems to be primarily that of an ornament. By contrast, this image shows the openly bisexual writer Vita Sacra West with her also bisexual husband in 1932. The figures, the clothes and poses suggest a kind of ease and equality. The unstudied glamour of those who have the confidence, means and talent to determine their own identity. A more recent suggestion of gender boundaries becoming more fluid um, within high fashion. So here we have Jaden Smith featuring in the 2016 Louis Vuitton women's wear campaign. At the time, and this is only a few years ago, it seemed revolutionary. But now the controversy already seems bizarre. A man in skirt, what's so strange about that? So very broadly, I'm using the term gender to refer to how we construct our identities in relation to gender categories, male and female, but increasingly other categories, trans, non-binary, agender. Language is key help changing to help us articulate a more complex gender identity with new words. And the word construct is important here. What does it mean to construct? In this context, it means that gender is not something that exists in and of itself, but as a construction which is continuously being built and rebuilt. A bit like an onion, we can also see gender as involving layers of meaning. As we peel the layers away, we are left with nothing. An onion is in its layers. There's no core. Others, similarly, gender is in the layers of meaning, not as an objective or physical category. In this context, I mean layers of meaning quite literally, as our clothing and body decoration communicate and create meaning. So I become a woman through engaging in the bodily rituals of cleaning, smoothing, hiding or emphasising, through how I choose to dress my body and how my body language performs a certain kind of femininity. Traditionally, we have thought of gender in terms of a binary, as either male or female. The new concepts of gender that are emerging, which try to break away from this binary, still remain in relation to the binary of male and female. We may start to imagine a world where gender becomes an irrelevant and superfluous category, no longer meaningful in terms of how we construct our identity. I would argue that we're some way off. For example, when we look globally, but also more locally, our gender is a major influence in terms of our opportunities. Our gender can mean we impose limitations on ourselves, but also that limitations are imposed on us. Sometimes these limitations are subtle and insidious either because we take it for granted. So, for example, that in a heterosexual relationship, it is somehow the boyfriend who proposes to the girlfriend. Rarely is it the other way around. Or it is only when we start to see our experience on a much broader scale that these inequalities become visible. So, for example, in the gender pay gap. As a feminist, I would argue that only when we have full gender equality 
do we no longer need the term gender? So a bit like how race as a cultural construct, because as you probably know, there is only one human race, will only stop being relevant when we live in a truly anti-racist world. And that brings me to a very important aspect of gender, identity. We can see gender as experience of having male or female identity, but also the experience that one's identity does not fit into either of these categories. And this is something we will touch on in a few weeks time. So returning to the onion metaphor, some might say to me, okay, but let's take a human. When you strip away the clothing and body decorations, you are left with a body which has characteristics of being male or female. You may have breasts, chest hair, penis or a vulva. But to help us get a, getting these things to model up, theories make a distinction between sex, which refers to biological characteristics, and gender as a cultural construct. However, even the medical community is increasingly waking up to the fact that these biological differences are not as clear cut as we once thought. But seeing as we are not studying biology or medicine, we are going to focus on the concept of gender rather than biological sex, and specifically how it relates to fashion, dress and identity. How fashion has constructed gender will be the focus of the next session. <laughs>